Hey, this is JD from Best MMA Picks. Coming up July with the, another broadcast here of uh, UFC Fight Night Orlando, UFC on Fox 17, Donald Cerrone versus Rafael Dos Anjos. And I apologize, I've kind of lost my voice. I'm fighting a really bad bout of bronchitis. Might have heard me on the last uh, on the last uh, broadcast. I apologize in advance. I'm going to try to get through this rather quickly. This will probably be one of the shortest broadcasts that I have. So I'm trying to avoid having a coughing attack while I'm on uh, live. So um, I did get a chance to view some footage on a lot of these fights. Um, a lot of them I did not get a chance to view footage on. Mainly, mainly the ones that I did not handicap completely are the women's card, um, which would include Sarah Kaufman, Valentina Shevchenko, and Marcos and Caroline, uh, Rhonda Marcos and Carolina Kowalkowitz. <laughs> I don't even know that I pronounced that correctly. But um, with that being said, almost all the other um, fights on the card I'm very comfortable with. Um, and I did view footage on a lot of these fighters. Um, so let's just start off from the bottom and we'll take it from there. And I'll just um, tell you what my lanes are real quick and why. And we'll just leave it at that. And anything, any any bets that are made are going to be, um, I'm going to be very uh, confident in. So, um, and I'll be viewing more footage as the week progresses as well as watching weigh-ins for, you know, changes and more difficult weight cuts with fighters. First fight, we've got Francis Magano and Luis Enrique. Uh, based on what I've seen from both these guys, uh, Nagano seems to be the more explosive athletic fighter with a higher fight IQ, um, has some grappling abilities, and has outstanding boxing. So my prediction here is for Francis Magano to defeat Luis Enrique by TKO in the first round. Moving on, we have Hader Hassan and Vicente Luque. Both these guys are ultimate fighter prospects. Um, they have met before and fought before. Um, I believe it was Luque that got the better out of the um, two of these guys in their last fight. And I think that this fight, Hassan is going to be the guy to um, come away victorious this time around. Um, I think he's given it a lot of thought on how he could improve since then. I think he has improved, and a lot of people are on Hassan as well. A lot of good handicappers. Um, I did not get a chance to view a whole lot of footage on Hassan. I don't really know him that well, but I am comfortable making a prediction for Hader Hassan to defeat Vicente Luque by KO. Moving on, we have Kamaru Usman and Leon Edwards. Um, Leon Edwards has um, quite a bit of uh, experience in the UFC. Um, he's from he's a Jamaican fighter. And Kamaru Usman is a Nigerian-based fighter. Um, and I believe he was an Ultimate Fighter prospect as well. Um, I'm gonna not really overthink this one too much. I think the grappling of Usman is gonna get this one done for him, um, and I think he's not gonna have much of an issue getting Leon Edwards to the ground. Um, so my uh, prediction is for Kamara Usman to defeat Leon Edwards by decision. Moving on, we have Cole Miller and Jim Allers, who have both trained together in the same gym in Florida. Um, American top team. Um, both these guys are very familiar with one another. Um, Allers being the less experienced out of the two fighters. Cole Miller has quite a bit of experience, and he's faced a lot of really uh, talented opponents. Um, so I'd give the experience advantage to Cole Miller. Ellers is probably a little bit better grappler than Cole Miller, although Cole Miller is very dangerous from any any part of the octagon, whether it be on the feet or on the ground. He is coming in as an underdog. I think that Ellers is not the smartest of fighters as far as you know what he does. He doesn't shoot for takedowns when he gets tagged. Um, he doesn't really go for takedowns that much or that often. I think he looked really solid against Chas Kelly, um, but Cole Miller is also a very difficult fighter. So it's kind of hard to say what's going to happen here, but I think that if it stays on the feet, I, I just see Jim Allers getting tagged by Cole Miller. So I have to give a slight advantage to Cole Miller. And my um, lean is for 
Cole Miller to defeat Jim Allers by uh, DKO. Next fight, we have Nick Lentz and Danny Castillo. Um, not too much thought I'm going to put into this one, but I just haven't been impressed with Danny Castillo at all. Um, I've been much more impressed with Nick Lentz, the tenacity of Nick Lentz, and the grappling of Nick Lentz. Um, Danny Castillo does have grappling skills, and he does have some takedown defense. Um, but I think the tenacity of Nick Lentz is going to get the job done here. And I could also see Danny Castillo getting tagged because he has a glass jaw. We've seen this before, and I've said it in all of his previous fights. A lot of these fighters should not be fighting. Um, Dana White has these guys fighting, and their jaws are done. So, and Danny Castillo is a perfect example of that. I don't think he's going to last in this fight. My um, lean here is to go with Nick Lentz to defeat Danny Castillo by TKO, ground and pound. Um, moving on, we have Josh Simon and Tam Dan McCrory. Uh, I'm not going to put a whole lot into this, but Simon has been very impressive, and I think he's not going to have any problem with the barn cat here. Um, both these guys like to strike. I think the better striker is Simon, and he also has grappling abilities as well. Um, he's got better striking accuracy. He absorbs less, so he's a more defensive striker and more technical. Um, and so my... Um, my prediction is for Josh Simon to defeat Tamron McCrory by TKO. If I were to lean, I would lean towards Sarah Kaufman, but leaning on Sarah Kaufman of this fight, um, I've leaned on her end and I've been disappointed before. Um, so she's an experienced fighter from Canada um, in the women's division, but I just can't, you know, it's hard for me to place a bet on Sarah Kaufman when I've had a bad um, experience in the past from it with an upset judges upset so we're going to probably lay off the women's bouts here if we do place any bets probably be one on marcos but i don't like laying two to one on women because of the fact that anything can happen and the judges sometimes screw these cards up completely but if i were to lean i'd lean with sarah Kaufman to defeat valentina shevchenko by decision C.B. Dalloway and Nate Marquardt, another example of chin issues and somebody who just needs to retire from the UFC altogether um, and their health being in jeopardy from continuing in the UFC. Nate Marquardt, um, I don't see him lasting in this fight. I think he's going to get taken down to the ground rather easily, and if he gets clipped in the chin and all, he's going to probably end up getting TKO'd here. So my prediction here is for C.B. Dalloway to defeat Nate Marquardt by TKO, ground and pound. Moving on, we have Charles Dobronx Oliveira versus Miles Jury. Uh, Dobronx is coming off of a loss. Um, it was kind of a fluke, to be honest. Um, he had an injury that he incurred within the first 30 seconds of his last fight. Hopefully, he's over that now and healthy and fighting healthy. Um, I think Jury is a more a better striker than Oliveira, but I think Oliveira has what it takes to um, be a game opponent here. Um, I don't know that he's going to do well on the feet against Jury. He'll probably get picked apart, but for whatever reason, if he's able to get the fight somehow to the ground, or if Jury somehow man manages to get him to the ground and shoots for a takedown, I could see him Jury getting himself into trouble on the ground with Oliveira because Oliveira has very high Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu credentials. Um, it's hard, really hard for me to pick somebody in this fight, but I have to give the advantage on the feet to Miles. Jury was not impressed against him in his fight against Donald Cerrone, but Cerrone's coming. Um, he's on a huge fucking winning streak. Um, Oliveira, it's just hard to say if he's going to have any ring rust here from the layoffs that he's had, uh, but I am uh, going to go with Jury here. Uh, my prediction is for Miles Jury to defeat Charles Oliveira by decision. Next fight, I think we already went over our lean for this. Uh, my lean is for Ronda Marcos to defeat Carolina Kowalski or Kowalkiewicz by decision. Next fight, we have Michael Johnson and Nate Diaz. Michael Domenis Johnson coming off of a, a loss um, that was controversial. Um, I just don't see anything 
other than uh, Michael Johnson punishing Nate Diaz for three rounds here. Uh, Nate Diaz looks like he's in a lot better shape than he was in the past. Uh, we could see some surprises here if he brings out his boxing, his dirty boxing, but I think everybody has the Nick and Nate Diaz puzzle solved as far as striking is concerned. Um, and people have exploited the ground game of Nate Diaz. Um, Michael Johnson can defend submissions fairly well. Uh, Nate Diaz is a Gracie uh, black belt, so he's very dangerous on the ground. Um, and if it goes to the ground, I think that Diaz is going to have an advantage there. Um, at four to one, it's there's an argue. Um, it could be argued that Nate Diaz could. Um, at four to one, Nate Diaz has some value. I think um, he's fought guys that were he's beaten Donald Cerrone before, the old Donald Cerrone. Um, so when Nate Diaz was in his prime, he was doing really well. Um, but I think people have his game plan figured out. He's got to come in fresh, with something new that is going to throw people off. And I just don't see that happening to Michael Johnson here. Um, but Nate Diaz is a volume striker, so he could his output could greatly exceed that of Michael Johnson's, um, and he could win a judge's uh, decision here um, if it stays on the feet. Um, I like Nate Diaz here, but I think Michael Johnson's a better fighter overall. I think Michael Johnson's not going to take any chances. In fact, we might even see a finish here. Um, it's really hard for me on this one because I do like Nate Diaz, and I think people are giving him a hard time. Um, and I think he's this is desperation mode for Nate Diaz. Um, and I think he needs to get the job done here, but I just, I'm not sure he can do it against Michael Johnson. But at 4-1, to one, it's really, I mean, there's a case there for Nate Diaz being a desperate fighter and having his kind of last chance before getting cut. Um, I just concerned a little bit too much about how much of a chip on his shoulder he might have how that might affect him in the fight. But my final lean is to go with Michael Johnson to defeat Nate Diaz by, I would say by decision. Moving on, we have Junior Dos Santos and Alistair Overeem. Uh, Overeem, another case of glass jaw syndrome. Um, I don't think this fight is going to last long at all. Dos Santos has been uh, lit up pretty well, too, although his chin seems to be halfway intact still. Um, hopefully, he has not suffered of any major concussions from all of the damage that he took from Cain Velasquez in the past. But um, the one who I think has the weakest chin is Alistair Overeem. Now, with that being said, though, everyone's predicting Junior Dos Santos to come out and knock Overeem out, which I would probably agree with being um, part of the lean. But Greg Jackson's MMA has been working with Alistair, and they're probably coming up with a very good strategy for Junior Dos Santos, which is going to involve taking down Junior Dos Santos to the ground. If this ends up on the ground, it could. Junior Dos Santos sucks off of his back. He really sucks off his back. As seen with Kate Velasquez, his Brazilian Jiu Jitsu really sucks. He's not used to being off his back, doesn't like being on the ground. Okay. And he gets very tired when. Somebody who's top heavy gets on top of him and you know beats him down pretty good. Um, he tends to gas. So Overeem can get him to the ground. Definitely going to be um, possible for him to win here. Um, but my um, prediction here is for Junior Dos Santos to defeat Alistair Overeem. is going to clip him and get a TKO probably in the second round um, after being taken down. Uh, but Overeem's definitely a good dog. In this fight, I just, if he had a little bit more of a chin, I'd probably be more apt to pick him for an underdog play, but I just don't trust his chin. So that's my lean for that. And lastly, we have the title bout between Rafael Dos Anjos and Donald Cowboy Cerrone, which I'm very excited for. Very excited for Donald Cerrone. He's getting a title shot. And I think this is going to be his, probably his one of his one and only times that he's going to get this opportunity presented to him. Um, these two have both met before. Dos Anjos has gotten the better out of Cerrone. I think Cerrone's going to come back this time. He's going to have an alternate strategy. You know, I'm sure he's thought about what happened in the last fight. 
um, and what he did differently. I think Cerrone's going to be going for broke here, and he's going to try to knock him out. He's going to be coming out super aggressive. Um, and I'm a little worried that Dos Anjos was on PEDs, um, which a lot of people are saying that he was. He looks a lot smaller. I don't know that it's going to affect things too much here, but it may. Um, so as a 2-1 to one underdog, you have to pick Donald Cerrone here. It's a no-brainer. So I think a lot of people would probably say that Dos Anjos is going to win this fight, but with the odds there, you're getting 2-1 to one on Donald Cerrone, who's very capable of just about submitting just about anybody and knocking out just about anybody in the weight division. So my prediction is for Donald Cerrone to um, get the belt here and defeat Rafael Dos Anjos by TKO. So that's kind of a bold prediction. Um, I hope everybody does well this card. I apologize for the uh, losers that I had last card. I was very surprised that so many champions lost their belts. It doesn't happen very often. It's been a very odd year in mixed martial arts where we've seen some very really dominant fighter just get completely obliterated. So, you know, anything can happen in the UFC. There's UFC is full of surprises. Um, congratulations to the handicappers who predicted those successfully. Um, anyway, I'm going to log off now. And uh, I will make sure you have us uh, added to your Facebook um, Instagram and uh, most of our plays go on Twitter right before the card starts. Um, I will be flying with my uh, kids for Christmas um, during the fight, so I probably won't be posting a whole lot. I'll try to get those picks posted a little early before the card starts. So, um, with that being said, good luck, everybody, and have a good night.